So, um, hello um, and welcome. Today I'm going to put uh, a dog uh, under the microscope and I'm also going to show you how to do the specimen preparation because a dog, uh, like many other mammals, are generally too big to be directly uh, microscopically observed. So what you have to do is you have to prepare the specimen and bring it into a form which is sufficiently thin and also small enough so that you can mount it on a microscope slide. And I'm going to show you now um, how to make a permanent mount uh, of Chico the dog. Okay, um, as I already mentioned, um, the problem uh, with large specimens is always that they have to be processed first in order for them to be uh, microscopically observed. Uh, after all, the microscope slide is uh, only that size approximately and uh, it's not, there's not a lot of space there. And uh, traditionally what you can do is the following. You take uh, a piece uh, of the specimen um, and then what you have to do is you have to uh, process it, you have to dehydrate it and you have to also microtome it. And microtoming means that you have to cut it into very thin sections before you're able to mount it on the slide and then you can observe it under the microscope. Um, however, this is a very lengthy process. Um, it takes uh, the whole preparation process takes several days because you have to dehydrate it using an alcohol series, and this takes uh, several days. And also, the microtoming process is is quite a lengthy and delicate process, so it's not very suitable for, uh, I would say, amateur microscopy use. But hospitals and research organizations they usually do that. Um, so this is one of the problems that I have to overcome. There's also a second problem and the second problem is, is that um, mammals, like many other animals, they have a so-called self-defense mechanism. So when they start to actually cut part of the animal out, then um, the animal might actually bite. Um, and this is a problem, okay? It's a safety issue. Um, and the third problem is it's, it's not my dog. Uh, it's the dog of my mother um, and uh, she doesn't like it if I cut a part of it out. So that's uh, essentially the, the difficulties here. So I have been doing a lot of research um, in how to solve this problem. And I did discover a method uh, which actually allows me to extract a specimen uh, from the dog in a very safe way uh, so that I don't get hurt. And all you need is, is you need some dissection scissors, okay? Um, and the good thing is, is that it not only works with dogs, but you can also do the same process with cats and also other mammals, even human beings. Okay, so let's get started now and I'm going to show you now how to extract uh, some specimen samples from Chico the dog. Well, this is uh, the dog. Okay, it's some kind of a terrier. He does look kind of cute, but actually, mm, yeah, he can be aggressive uh, sometimes. And he's about 30 centimeters in length, uh, so actually microtoming him and slicing him up would be a lot of work. I'd have to make 300,000 separate sections and mount them. That's too much, so I decided to use this much simpler, uh, simpler method. Um, so I basically cut off a piece of uh, the dog here. I'm putting it into the white plastic container. And uh, because I saw it's not enough, uh, I cut a separate part uh, of the dog as well, um, also to be collected. And this is now the specimen that uh, I'm going to look at under the microscope. So it's kind of protein fibers that I'm going to be uh, looking at right now. So these protein fibers uh, are hydrophobic because they're covered a little bit uh, with animal fat. And therefore, um, a hydrophobic mounting medium is also very suitable because uh, then there are a few bubbles, okay? So I'm placing now on the microscope slide, I'm uh, placing some of this mounting medium. It happens to be Uperol, that's the name of the medium. And then into this mounting medium, I'm putting the part of the dog, okay? And I'm using my tweezers now. And uh, in order to minimize the bubbles, I'm pressing uh, the fibers, the protein fibers, into the mounting medium. And uh, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm also adding a second drop of mounting medium on top just to make sure that everything's really nicely covered. Okay. Um, and uh, it takes about six weeks for the mounting medium to completely dry out. But then I have actually part of the dog preserved for almost all eternity. Yeah, because uh, this is going to be a very stable uh, slide. Okay, here now I'm placing the cover glass on top um, of the of the specimen. Yeah, and you can now see how that the mounting medium uh, and the specimen they spread nicely uh, over a larger area, and so the specimen is quite thin, and that's basically what we want. We want to have uh, a thin and transparent. Uh, slide. Um, I'm using again a little bit of force here to uh, press everything flat and I'm doing the same thing with the second uh, dog specimen. Okay, Again a small drop of mounting medium 
Um, and in this case now I'm doing something slightly different. Um, I'm actually cutting part of the, uh, the specimen using my dissecting scissors and kind of sprinkling it over the mounting medium. So I actually have uh, smaller protein fiber sex, uh, segments uh, that I can observe now. Yeah? And all of the excess I'm simply removing by kind of blowing it away um, and uh, the, those fibers that have contacted the mounting medium, they will actually tend to stick. Um, and again here, um, I will add a small drop of uh, mounting medium on top just to make sure that everything is very nicely covered. Yeah, patience is, a, is, a, is quite necessary here. Um, and uh, yeah, I just make sure that more of these fibers um, end up inside the mounting medium. Yeah, again a small drop. Uh, it's it's a little bit not enough yet. Yeah, so I think that's that's gonna be fine. Um, I've blown away the excess, and then again a cover glass goes on top. Yeah, and you can see that uh, these fibers are a little bit better visible because they are pigmented, so they're darker, and uh, you can see them better. And I think also under the microscope you are going to be able to see a little bit uh, better contrast. Yeah, and then uh, you have to wait six weeks because this is how long it takes for the mounting medium to completely dry. Uh, but then, as I mentioned, then you have at least uh, slides that uh, are stable for the next 100, 150 years. So you're actually making them almost for eternity. So you have part of the dog preserved for a long time. Yeah, and this is now under the microscope. And you can see here, yeah, that is basically my dog sample that uh, I've prepared. And you can see all of those nice protein fibers um, and going crisscross. And now I'm basically scanning the slide. And this is in bright field because the, the hair, the protein fibers look bright on dark on bright background. And this is dark field now because now the background is dark. And I've uh, achieved this effect by adding a, a filter. Okay. And uh, this filter um, reverses, uh, reverses the colors. Here I'm a little bit out of focus and I'm focusing now. And I also increase the magnification. And you can see that some of these protein fibers um, are actually transparent a little bit. And you can also see the surface texture of these fibers. So yeah, that's uh, quite a nice and an interesting specimen to observe. Here that's another place. Yeah. And when you actually uh, magnify that much, then sometimes those uh, structures that appear to be not transparent, opaque, um, start to become transparent because the bright light is able to shine through it. And now you can actually see at a yet higher magnification, uh, you can actually see into these fibers. Yeah, and uh, last but not least, again, a picture um, within bright field uh, showing very nicely the different colors and the different diameters and thicknesses of the dog specimen fibers. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, microscopy is quite interesting. Uh, there are many things that you can see, and that's, that's actually quite a nice one. Yeah, you can see the, the texture quite, quite well. Yeah, well, I think uh, I'm going to uh, qual call it quits uh, for right now. I can also inform you that the dog is still complete. Uh, there are no parts missing. The two ears are still there, the tail is there, it also has four legs. Um, and uh, also my mother was very relieved that I handed her back a complete dog. And uh, basically uh, it shows that uh, you do not need any advanced techniques to extract samples. And I hope that you uh, considered also the tutorial concerning the making of the permanent mount uh, interesting. And I also encourage you to pick up microscopy as a hobby if you have not already done so. Because it does expand your horizons uh, quite a bit and you can also see things that you normally were, are not able to see. Um, in any case, I wish you a nice day and as always, happy microbe hunting. Bye-bye.